What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Behind me is La Gringa. If you guys have been following us on Instagram for a while, you may have seen this truck in our feed. This happens to be one of my old trucks. I sold it to one dude, he sold it to another dude. Now that dude brought it back here to the shop with a long list of things he wants to fix. We have a ton of sheet metal work to do on this truck, including that pesty cab corner that everybody knows. These square bodies are notorious for a rusty cab corner, rockers, all that kind of stuff, but we're gonna show you in detail how to get those cab corners fixed. Along with all that sheet metal work, we are gonna do a beautiful B-rolled C-notch cover. But first, we're gonna start with a AC delete panel in the engine compartment and clean up that firewall. air suspension set up in this thing is very, very, very rigged. We are gonna take out this old manual setup, get all these solenoids out. We have a fresh airlift setup coming in that we're gonna put in this. Make some beauty panels to close all this C-notch out, get rid of all this stuff, hide it, and make this part look a little bit better. We have a special treat for you guys. We're gonna show you how to do patch panel work. So as you can see, we got the bed off the truck and everything is out of our way so we can do this corner patch. So the back corner of the C10, it's pretty common. You get really bad rust back here. Now you could do two ways. You could either just patch it together, just little pieces, just scab everything in, or you can get a re-stamped corner piece like this one here from LMC. We're gonna show you step-by-step how to actually do this job without killing yourself and breaking the bank. There's gonna be some paint and body work afterwards, but for the most part, we're gonna be able to use a simple MIG welder, a grinder, a Sharpie, and just a little bit of ingenuity and some time. So as you can see, this corner piece is gonna replace this whole guy here. I'm gonna clean this up first, get it down to the metal. Just for safe measure, we got the gas tank out. This thing was pretty much right where we needed to start cutting and welding, so. And now we have all the room in the world. So as you can see, the edge of this flange is completely rotted out. We're gonna start separating this thing from the inner shell. This is a spotty seam right here. These little divots right here are spot welds. And if this wasn't all rotted out oh, back here, you'd be able to clean all the metal off of here and see all the spot welds. But as you can see, I'm gonna almost take this thing apart with just my hand. This is all holding me up from getting the panel to be able to actually sit on nice and smooth. So I can't really mark a line here and make sure it's perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark like a, a rough line, lower than where this seam is actually gonna be. Cut it on there, drill all the spot welds out. Get a bulk of this old nasty metal away. So then we can take our new cap and now put it over and there shouldn't be anything holding us up. All right, well, as expected, a gigantic mess when we took the panel off. We have a key chain thingy from something. Got a key here. I don't know what the heck this is. Looks like a magnet from like an old speaker or something. All fell out. So here's our under panel. I'm probably just gonna paint this with some rust inhibitor. We've kind of capped that in. We cleaned up all our surfaces where we did our, our spot welds. This inside channel here looks pretty good. And this is our old panel. 
as you can see, yeah, it came in a half inch below our original cut line. So now what we'll be able to do is take our new panel and lay it up there. Yeah, look at that. This seam obviously is gonna tell you where it needs to fall back here and, and right here. So once you get all this kind of close, these panels never fit perfect. You know, they're gonna take some, some massaging, like this angle right here. And normally what you can do is you can, you can bend this with your hand and kind of force it in. I'll use my Clicos and I'll Clico on this surface here and I'll Clico here and here and just start working it in. And once I get it to kind of hold tight, that's when I'll put my final mark up here. We'll cut it in, Clico back on, and then start seeing what we can do about this seam here to get it to butt up perfect against the actual body of the truck. So now you have your patch panel all set. I'm, I got this little gap here I'm not really too happy with, so I have to massage this to get this exactly where I want it. But right now my concern is this gap right here. As you can see, we have about an eighth inch over on this edge. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna shut the door and I'm gonna start taking measurements of the gap. And it's not exact, this is an old truck. You don't have to kill yourself trying to make everything perfect. So the gap is pretty tight here and then it gets big. And then up here, it almost goes to zero. So this is how they built these vehicles back in the day. So it's not perfect. Down here, I'm liking, liking the gap at the bottom, but I'm not liking it at the top. So I'm gonna mark a line and I'm gonna come down to zero and I'm actually gonna suck this whole thing in. So we have our, our line marked now. I like to use a masking tape and it'll give you a nice straight edge, especially on compound turns like this. I'm only gonna take a blade away, just the thickness of the blade of the actual grinder that I'm gonna use to cut this. We have our piece cut. As you can see, it's just flapping in the wind right now, but it's coming pretty significantly. All right, so our little trim trick worked. We're now at the edge of the factory seam, coming all the way down. So I'm gonna drag the TIG welder over now. I'm gonna do some spot welds down this. You guys don't have to use a TIG welder. You can use a MIG welder. We have like a Miller Matic 211, which is pretty common. I like using the TIG welder because it's going to keep the weld really small, believe it or not. You can warp the metal welding, but you can also warp the metal grinding. If you have like a big fat weld on there and you go to grind it down, you're actually gonna warp the metal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a series of little tacks on the TIG torch. And then you have what's called post flow, which is the amount of gas that's gonna flow after you're done welding. And you just kind of hold it on there. When you do that, your likelihood of it warping are very, very minimal. So we have this leading edge nice and welded up. When you're gonna start tacking, you're gonna go every half inch, just a bunch of tacks. And that's gonna be like your pattern you're gonna be welding on. Come from here, I'm gonna weld back so that when I start my weld again, I'm gonna go to the next dot and I'm gonna weld back. And the point of that is, is when you're stopping your weld, you're stopping on a cool pass, not a hot pass. So if you're coming here and you're going this way, and then you start here and go this way, you're hitting that point twice. So you're cooking the metal twice, and which is gonna increase the chances of warping. It takes patience, you don't wanna fly through this, but now that we have this welded up, we're gonna go ahead and paint underneath it and do the final weld and this hatch should be all set. We went ahead and we welded all the way around the outside of the truck on the back side. I put three spot welds back in where this inner structure is. Welded on the underside here. Got this all welded in. So this panel is pretty much all set. I did some Bondo work, sanded it down. Try to make it look patinaed like the rest of this truck. So we didn't want this new cab corner to stand out and look all fresh. So a couple coats of paint, some sanding and buffing down and she's looking old and rustic just like the rest of the truck. 
If you guys are interested on how to patina your own car or a sign or anything else, drop a comment in the comment section below and maybe that's something we can do for you guys. Meanwhile, I'm gonna switch gears, go outside and start on the bed liner on the new C-notch cover. Mike buried the etching primer on the bed. I already taped off the edges where we do not want to get bed liner. Get my brown paper, extend it out just a little bit more because I don't know how strong the sprayer is. All right, now that we got our bed liner sprayed down on this bed, it is looking very nice. This is a truck, so you know, you're throwing tools in and out, you're throwing seats and coolers. So not only does this material protect things from getting dented and scratched, it also really helped this old bed look uniform. It made the new C-notch go with the rest of this original bed. You could get it in black, you could get it in really any tintable color you want. So if you wanna kind of match your truck, that's very nice to use. They just give you these little bottles and you mix it all together. <laughs> they even give you a sprayer. So Timmy did an awesome job with this hinged box where our battery is gonna sit. And then we got our two compressors mounted. I went ahead and used some sound dender on the inside of this box and the inside of that box just to kind of stop all this from rattling when those compressors kick on. I'm pretty stoked about the way this came out. All right guys, well that's a wrap for this episode with Lagringa. We have a few more things to do to it before we send her back home to the owner. We're gonna reseal and put all new gaskets on the whole motor drivetrain of the truck. We have a new airlift, air management system that we're gonna install, new tank, new lines, all that stuff. If you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the comment section below. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out anything on this truck as well as all the other cool stuff we're going on. Don't forget about the twin turbo Chevelle. We got some updates on the EV C10 behind me and of course our K10 LS swap. So we'll see you guys, thanks.